Hey guys, Fallen Lorelei here with my first tutorial ever. I am so excited about this. Uh, I decided to make a tutorial on how to parallax map using RPG Maker MV. Now this RPG Maker just came out like about a week ago, I think, and there aren't that many resources available from the community for people to use. So we're stuck using the default RTP at the moment. And in order to make sure all of our maps aren't looking exactly the same, uh, I've decided to make this uh, tutorial, How to Parallax Map. Now through parallaxing, you can recolor and resize and clump together and make something look a little more different than someone else's map. So let's look at something that I made yesterday. Uh, basic forest scene. Took me about an hour. Uh, very simple. You can see the overlay here. He's walking behind the house, uh, he's walking behind the tree, and also I made it so that you can have these animated water tiles while also having something unique like rocks poking out or uh, the flowers poking out and even these submerged shrubs that you can see. Okay. So for this tutorial, I'm going to be making something very similar to this, just a basic forest scene, very small, uh, and it's going to be for beginners, so it might be a little slow for those of you who might already know how to parallax map, and I'm sorry for that. Um, you will need to follow along RPG Maker MV. You can use uh, different RPG Maker versions, but MV is quite a bit different. Uh, they have plugins, for example, not scripts, and the folder locations are different, so some things will be different, but I, I think you can figure it out. I will also be using Photoshop as my image editor of choice. I love Photoshop. Um, I grew up with Photoshop, so I'm more comfortable using this program than, say, GIMP, although I know the m more people prefer GIMP because it's free. Uh, I'm sure that you can apply what I'm teaching into GIMP. Um, the terminology is probably the same. And I think you can figure it out. Uh, but for the tutorial, I will be using Photoshop. Uh, you will also need a calculator, unless you're really good at math. I recommend a calculator, regardless. And the one plugin that we're going to be using, well, two plugins, but one is uh, already with MV, is Yanfly's uh, Region Restrictions uh, plugin. Now this plugin came with my MV, uh, I don't know if that's because it was a pre-order or what, uh, but you can find this plugin, Region Restrictions, at his website, or her website, uh, yanfly.moe. Okay, you can just Google it, I'm sure it's fine. All right, so let's begin. What we're going to do is we're going to make the map first in the editor of RPG Maker, just a basic skeleton uh, that we're going to copy and paste into Photoshop for the details. So for this map, this was my original map, uh, just the layers or the terraces here and the water and the house, and then I brought it over to Photoshop and I made it this, okay? So, let's do that. Let's go to new, new map. Um, we can call this first tutorial ever. Aww. For the tile set, we want outside because it is a forest. And for the width and the height, you can choose whatever width and height that you want. For this tutorial, I'm going to keep it 17 by 13, small. Uh, I don't want to spend forever making a huge map just for this tutorial where I'm teaching just techniques, right? All right, so after this is filled in, just okay. And now we have this beautiful blank map. All right. Click this grass tile here and fill in all the transparencies. And now we have just a blank field. What people like to do in RPG Maker is to add these layers or add these terraces uh, to their maps in order to make them more dynamic and not just like a flat, a flat field, right? No one likes that. <laughs> so go down to uh, your A tiles all the way to the bottom uh, and find this terrace, uh, the layer, whatever you want to call it, and just start grabbing the outline and fill in wherever you want. Doesn't matter. Just fill in totally randomly. If you make a mistake, just color it in. No one's going to know. Control V. Whoops. See, like that. There. 
Actually, I don't like I don't like how it's that far up. So I'm gonna erase that and make it a little more random like that. You don't want it to be a flat line. No one likes that. Cool. And this one here. Alright, so this is our first layer. When we're done with the outline, fill it in. Fill in the corners like that. Like that and that. And then the other corner here, here, and here. And then the middle. Yeah, like that. Cool. And this is going to look different than this map. I hope that's okay. And I hope I don't mess up trying to make it look different. <laughs> Alright, so we have our first layer. Uh, let's go ahead and make our second layer right below. Just fill it in. Very simple outline like that. Mm, I'm going to do this. Yeah. No, 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 no. <laughs> okay, that looks kind of cool. There, our second layer. Uh, fill in the corners like before. And then the middle, like that. And good, we have our two layers. This should be fine. Uh, you'll notice how when this layer uh, now exists into this layer, um, it looks really weird. It looks really bad, actually. What we need to do is make this cliff higher, this cliff longer. And to do that, we need to get rid of these bottom tiles and just continue them down. So we want it to be two tiles higher, one, two, like that. And then the same with the corner, one two. And this corner, one, two, one, two, whoops, one, two, and then all the way up there, one, two, there. That looks a lot better, doesn't it? Uh, what other people also like to do is to make it a little more, a little more dynamic, um, by adding one, one tile length, uh, but to do that you need to plan ahead a little bit more than I did. Let's just see how these look. Let's put it down. You can also use this here, make it a little, a little, little more different. Um, yeah, actually that looks fine, right? And it's just one tile in height just to make it more, more dynamic, more interesting to look at. There, that's fine. Okay. Now up here, we could continue the line, but it looks kind of boring when you, when you make it flat like that. So what we're going to do is make the illusion of something else growing there. And up here what we can do is make the illusion of Oops. Of it ending. Uh, let me see. What do I want to do? We can do that. The same that we did over here. It should be fine. And maybe even one more. One more like that. No, I don't like that. Let's do this. I don't like that either. Let's do this. Okay. So it's a little more different. It looks like more of a mountainside than a forest, huh? Well, whatever. We'll see what happens. Alright, so we got our layers. We have our dynamics. Now let's add the water. So here I have the waterfall going down like this. I'll make it go down like this on this side. So grab your water tool. Grab this one. There is this one and there's also this one. Um, and people will tell you what the differences are. This is to add depth and this is to add shallow, and we're just going to add some shallow water for now. So let's do something super simple like this. Have the water go off to the side like that, just to make it more interesting. There, that looks nice. Make it look... yeah. And then fill it out. It's going to be like a little, a little lake here, a little river. 
whatever. Cool. And what you can do is add depth with this one, like that. Um, whoops. Sometimes it it's up to you if you want to do that or not. I went here too. And I forgot to fill in this part here. I wonder if we can do something like that. How's that look? Hm. Alright, that looks fine. Very hilly. Um, what we need to do now, and something I should have done before the water, but it doesn't really matter, is add corners to these cliffs. Add some corners. And the corner ones are here. You really only need these two. Alright, so grab this one. You want to put it where that uh, bit is missing. So right there. And here. And here, and here, and here, and here. And unfortunately that breaks our water, but that should be fine. And then the other side. Here, 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 where else? Just follow along the outlines to see what's missing. And that looks fine. Good, we're good. Alright, so we added our water, we added our corners, we added the cliffs. Now, let's add our little house. A little cabin. And you can use whatever walls that you want. Uh, I'll go ahead and use this one. Make a little square here. Two layers high is good. I'm actually gonna bring it down one. Like that. And then what I did here was make it um, not a square shape. Something more interesting. So you can add like a two layer here. And find your roof. You can use these roofs, 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 um, but I like these. A little more interesting. Uh, let's do blue. You can do whatever roof you want. I'm going to do blue. Fill that in. And just follow along with how I'm filling in this roof here. And if you ever make a mistake, don't be afraid to just control V fix it up because no one's going to know. Oops, like that. Good. So here's our cute little house. Um, I'm going to add a chimney. You don't have to add a chimney. Uh, you don't even have to do it in the editor here. You can do it in Photoshop later. Um, but I like making sure I don't forget to add a chimney. It's the little things, you know. Alright. So here's our forest. <laughs> I don't think it's a forest, really. I think it's a mountainside, but that's fine. <laughs> uh, let's see if we can add steps. I wonder I wonder if I can even make steps. Like here, yeah. Okay, that looks good, right? And what we want to do with these steps is to add these Ugh, why isn't it working? You want to finish up get rid of that outline there by using a grass tool, uh, whatever grass tool that you think would work nicely. Uh, it does add a, a jagged edge here, but we're going to fix that later. We're also going to be fixing these later, too, if you see what I'm talking about. Alright, but this looks good, right? This looks like a nice little area to begin our parallax mapping. Uh, what we need to do now and I'm probably going to finish up the video in a, in a part two, because this has already gone on long enough. Uh, but we're going to go ahead and put this in Photoshop. There are many ways with, that we can put this in Photoshop. Uh, MV actually comes up with a way to save it. You can right click and save this image. But unfortunately, this isn't working at the time that I'm making this tutorial. Uh, hopefully they fix that. Uh, but when you save this image, it, it's shrunken. You can't even use it. So, what we can do is we can make a screenshot of this, we can use a snipping tool, uh, whatever you need to do. But before we do that, we're going to open our Photoshop, and we're going to be making a new canvas to paste it into. Now when we make this canvas, we want it to be the exact size that this map is. Okay? To do that, you're going to find your width and your height, and you're going to multiply these by 48. 48 is the tile size in RPG Maker MV. So this means 17 48 uh, tiles across, 48 width tiles across. So take out your calculator and do 17 times 48, right? And it's 816. And I already have, oh, I don't, cool. 
so 816. And then for the height, we've got 13, um, where is it? Yeah, 13 times 48, 624. So we write in 624, and everything else should be fine. It doesn't matter what the background is, can be transparent, can be a color, because we're just going to cover it up anyway. Uh, but make sure that these are pixels, that is important. And then just press OK. And then we have this. Um, my Photoshop already has this grid that shows up. And this grid is very important because it shows the 48 by 48 tiles. And by seeing where these tiles are, you'll be able to see where your character can walk. Um, and this is very important when you put in all of the details later. So to show this grid, what you need to do is go to Edit, Preferences, Guides, Grid, and Slices. And click that. And here, under Grid, what you want is grid line every 48 pixels. Okay, grid line every 48 pixels, and then press OK. If it doesn't show up, what you need to do is go to View, Extras, or View Show Grid here. Okay, and then after you click that, it should show up. So let's get our map in there. How are we going to do that? You could go ahead and press Print Screen on your keyboard. Uh, what I'm going to do is use the Snipper tool, Snipping tool, and click New, Highlight it, and then copy. Um, notice how I didn't try to make it perfect, okay, because that would just make, be a headache if we tried to do that. So I went above and beyond uh, the, the outline. I'm just going to copy it and paste it in here. And if you pressed print screen, you just go ahead and, and paste it. And what we want to do is bring it over to be exactly in the corner. If you have snap on, maybe turn that off because that might mess you up, um, but make sure it's right there in the corner. And then preview it to make sure that the lines look right over the tiles and it looks good. Right? That looks fine. So to view 100, and what you can do is control E to merge it down so you, you aren't moving it around. You could lock it if you want, um, but I just merge it down. Okay. I think that's all I'm going to do for part one. Part two, we're going to be using Photoshop uh, to edit this map to make it very interesting, um, very colorful, full of trees and foliage and things in the water. Um, it should be good. So let me know in the comments what I did right, what I did wrong, what was totally awful. Um, maybe I shouldn't be making tutorials. Uh, I probably still will because it's, it's actually a lot of fun. I had a lot of fun making this, even if it was just basic mapping in the editor. Um, yeah, so let me know. See you guys.